What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to host the exploit offline, completely offline, so that you don't accidentally update your firmware on the PS5. I know this is a pretty big concern for a lot of people when using the PS5 exploit, because most people are using Spectre's exploit, which runs through the WebKit through a web page. So you have to be connected to the internet to access the exploit site. And of course, that runs the risk of you accidentally updating your firmware to a higher firmware that's patched the vulnerability, unless, of course, you've taken the proper precautions to block Sony servers. But obviously, not everybody does that or does that correctly. And then there's a risk of you accidentally updating. So one of the best ways to do this is to use an ESP chip like the ESP8266 chip or the ESP32 or 32S2 or 32S3. So these little Arduino style chips have a little Wi-Fi network. It runs its own isolated Wi-Fi network that's completely isolated from the internet. And you can actually host the PS5 exploit on one of those chips so that you can still access the exploit. You can still inject payloads. You can still connect through FTP while remaining completely offline and not connecting to Sony servers at all. So, so the cheapest of these chips are the ESP8266s which I've seen on Amazon for about six pounds in here in the UK. So only a few pounds or a few dollars. They're pretty cheap, pretty easy to get one. And of course, we also use these chips on the PS4. So if you've been doing any PS4 stuff and you still have any of those chips left over, you can repurpose them here for the PS5 exploit. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to set these up. So the source from this comes from Stugd or Stugd. And you can see here that we've got all of the stuff here. So there's ESP, PS5 server 32 for ESP32 S2, S3, and ESP32 boards. He also has one here for the ESP8266 chips. That's specifically for the ESP D1 Mini Pro. Although I have tried this on my ESP chip, which is completely different and it works just fine. So we're going to go ahead and use these now. This particular setup here goes through quite a lot of unnecessary stuff like, you know, actually compiling the source yourself, adding a, an extra library, adding, you know, the board manager to the Arduino IDE software and going through and installing an additional plugin as well. So there's a lot of stuff involved here. So I've decided to kind of skip this and just give you guys a pre-compiled bin file that you can just flash directly onto the chip which is going to be a lot quicker and easier to get set up so that you don't have to manually set the Arduino IDE software up here and compile the source code yourself. So you can download it here on Mediafire. So I'll have the link here down in the video description. So click the link here to download the PS5 ESP host. We also want to download Node MCU Flasher for flashing the bin file onto the chip. So download Node MCU Flasher.exe. Again, all the links will be in the description. You may also need the drivers. This is for the ESP8266. You can get the CP210X Universal Windows driver. So you might need to download that driver in order to get your chip to show up on the computer to be detected. So you can also download that. I'll leave it down in the video description. So once you've got all three of those things downloaded here, of course, you can install the drivers. If you right click and go to Device Manager, make sure you have the ESP device connected to your computer. If you open Device Manager on your computer and you go to Ports, COM and LPT, this will give you your COM ports and you're looking for some kind of USB to UART bridge or it might say, you know, CP210 or it might say something like, you know, ESP device or something like that. So you're looking for that COM port. So you want to see what COM port your actual ESP device is on. Now, some ESP devices like the ESP32 S2s for example, and some of those other variants, they may not show up in here unless you switch the chip into programmer mode, which on an ESP32 S2, you have to hold down the boot button on the chip and then press the reset button. Then that will switch it into programmer mode where it should then be detected here in device manager. So you need to make sure your chip is detected here in device manager. If it shows up that it's got a missing driver and the device isn't working properly, then again, download the CP210 universal windows driver and extract it into a folder. And then from there, we can go ahead and install the driver in Device Manager by right-clicking on it and going to Update Driver, Browse My Computer for Drivers. Then you just select the folder that has the drivers inside and you click Next and it installs the drivers right there. 
So install any drivers, make sure the device is showing up there and check what COM port it's using. So you can see my ESP8266 is using COM port number five, so COM5. So from there, we can then run the Node MCU Flasher program. So we'll load that up. And then for serial ports, we will select COM5 or whatever COM port your device is connected to. So then we're going to browse for the bin file. So we've got our PS5 ESP host here. So you've got a bin file for the ESP32, one for the S2 and the S3, and one for the 8266. So my device is an ESP8266. So I'm going to go ahead and extract that bin file and load that up here into Node MCU Flasher. So I've loaded that bin file here into Node MCU Flasher. I'm going to select the baud rate on 115200. You can select the slowest baud rate in order to get the best flash, which will take longer to flash, but generally slower is better. I typically just use 115200 most of the time, and it usually works. I'm going to select the flash mode on DIO. Sometimes you can use QIO instead, but DIO is like the most widely supported one. And then we're going to say yes, wipe all data and then flash node MCU. And that's going to write the bin file directly to the chip. And there we go, leaving, staying in bootloader mode. So it says unplug and replug or reset the device. So you want to unplug the ESP chip and plug it back in with the USB cable. And then if you go to your Wi-Fi networks on your computer, you should see that the device now shows up. So you can see there it shows up as PS5 web access point, which is what you want. So once you see that, then that means you should be up and running. So all we need to do now is unplug the ESP chip from the computer and plug it into a USB port on the PS5. So I would recommend plugging it into one of the back USB ports so that you still have the front ports free for any peripherals that you want to connect or for connecting your, your PS5 controller to charge it. So just have it plugged into the back because you can leave it plugged in there all the time. So now whenever you turn on the PS5, it will power the chip, which will run the Wi-Fi network and the PS5 can connect to it. And then you'll be able to access the exploit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so back on the PS5, we're going to go to settings. We're going to go down to network settings, settings, make sure connect to the internet is selected and then set up an internet connection. And I'm going to select a Wi-Fi network instead. So there it is, PS5 web access point. We're going to select it. We'll show password there. So the password is just password. We're going to select OK and connect up to the access point. And so, yeah, we get a message here saying cannot connect to the Internet, which is fine because, of course, we're not actually trying to connect to the Internet here. We're just connecting to its own network. If we go to system and system software console information, you can see we do have an IPv4 address 10.1.1.100. So now we should automatically be able to go to the exploit from the user guide because the DNS will be automatically set up for the ESP chips DNS, which automatically redirects the user guide to the exploit page. So if you just go into the user guide here, it should automatically take us straight to the site. So there we go. As you can see, it's now loading the site right here. It's loading the exploit. And there we go. You can see the exploits now loading triggering UAF and there we go as you can see launching elf loader port 9020 so what if you want to use a payload like the FTP payload and connect through FTP because we're not connected to the internet so how am I supposed to connect from another device well basically as long as you have another device that is close enough to the PS5 that you can connect to that access point on then you can just connect that device to the same access point and you'll still be able to network between the PS5 and the device that you're trying to connect from, like a phone or your computer. So for example, we'll use my computer here. I'll switch back over to the computer. All I have to do on my computer is connect to that same Wi-Fi network. So PS5 web access point, I can connect to it on my computer. That way my computer and my PS5 are both on the same network. And then we should be able to send payloads, connect through FTP, just like we can if my PS5 was online and my, uh, my computer was online on the same network. So there we go. So PS5 web access point secured. So I've got myself Netcat GUI, a payload injector, and also the FTP payload for the PS5. I'm going to drag into the payload injector and I'm going to change the IP address to 10.1.1.100, which was the IP address of the PS5 on that uh, ESP chip. And we're going to go ahead and inject payload here. And there you go, you can see it's done. 
PS5 listening on 10.1.100, port 1337. And then I can also use FTP as well. Since I'm connected here, we can just go to 10.1.1.100 and port number 1337. Quick connect, click OK, and there you go. I'm connected to my PS5's hard drive over FTP, over the network. Even though my PS5 is not connected to my normal router, it's connected to this ESP chip, but my computer is also connected to this ESP chip. You can see here, my computer is not online either, but I'm able to access FTP because both devices are connected to that ESP chip right now. You know, I can edit stuff on the hard drive of the PS5. I can send payloads over to the exploit on the PS5, even though the PS5 is connected to this offline network. So there's no risk of me accidentally updating the PS5 to a higher firmware where we are completely offline, but we still have all the same functionality that we had when we were online uh, for using the exploit. So another interesting thing is that you can use any web browser shortcuts because the ESP chip is going to automatically redirect any DNS request, any DNS request at all, not just the user guide uh, on the PS5, but any DNS request that is made by the PS5, it will redirect to the exploit site. So that means even if I just go on this web browser shortcut here, it's going to redirect me to the exploit right there. Uh, if I go to my notifications that I set up that can launch different websites, any website I try and go on here is going to, again, redirect me straight to loading the exploit. So that way, even if you have one of these web browser shortcuts set up, then this can still work. You can access the site from there as well, not just the user guide. So the last thing that I want to cover here is how to update the site in future on the ESP chip, you know, in case there's some kind of stability improvements to the host or maybe some other kind of improvement, like, you know, more firmwares being supported. So in this case, you need a version of the host that's actually designed for the ESP chip because you can't have any folders. So any site that has folders isn't going to work. It has to be all the raw files in the same location here in the root, just like this one, which is the what the actual files that are already on the ESP chip. But this is just an example. So this will only work for the ESP32 chips, the ESP32 S2s and the S3s right now because they have an admin panel also set up so that you can actually, you know, upload new files and replace files. Whereas the, the version for the ESP8266 chip right now does not have that admin panel, which basically means that you cannot update the files on the ESP8266 chip right now. But if that changes in future, I'll leave a link down in the video description or probably a pinned comment to let you guys know that you can update the files on the 8266 chips. Once maybe the source code for that gets improved to include that admin panel, then I'll definitely let you guys know. So basically, all we need to do on the ESP32 chips though to update it is essentially if we just connect to the ESP chip. So I've got my ESP32 S2 chip that has the PS5 host, you know, the bin file flash to it. So I'm going to connect to that right there. So in order to update the files, all you need to do is go to the IP address of the chip. So 10.1.1.1 or you can go to, I think it's ps5.local. Uh, you can go to that DNS address. So either that or 10.1.1.1 and then add forward slash admin dot html to the end. So 10.1.1.1 forward slash admin dot html. If you go there, it should take you to the admin panel, which currently is not present on the 8266 chips, which is why you can't replace the files, although you can replace it on any of the ESP32 chips. So from there, we can simply go to the file manager. So that'll take us to the files right here. And here's all of the files on the host. So all we want to do if we want to replace these is we can hit delete all and then that will take us to this section here and we can click format storage, click OK. And that will reformat it and get rid of all the files that are currently on the chip. And there we go. No files found. From there, we can go to the file uploader and then select files. And then I'm just going to replace them with the same files <laughs> that were on the host anyway. But obviously, if these were updated files, then you could just select the updated files that you want to add onto the ESP chip, the updated host, and then you can click open and then you can select upload files and wait for all of those to be uploaded to the chip. And there you go. You can see they've all been updated. So now if I go back to 10.1.1.1, you can see it's now loading the exploit right there. So that is essentially it, guys. That is how you can use the ESP8266 chips or the ESP32s, the 32S2s, the 32S3s, to host the PS5 exploit 
offline on its own isolated network where you're still able to inject payloads, you're still able to connect to the PS5 through FTP, but the PS5 is connected to an isolated network that is completely disconnected from Sony servers, from the internet, so that there's no risk of you ever updating to a higher firmware and losing access to the jailbreak. So I also have videos on how to host the exploit locally on your computer. And I've also got similar videos for this on the PS4 as well for the PS4 jailbreak. So I'll have those videos linked on screen and in the video description. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.